Hey everyone, Ray Sawville, RaySawville.com. In today's video, we are going to be going through Bing ads and how you can be using it today in your digital marketing strategy. A lot of people do not use Bing and they just don't think about it. And it sometimes outperforms Google surprisingly and it's a no brainer. And Bing has some tools that are built into the interface to just import your Google ads campaigns just to get you started. So if you haven't thought about Bing before, I highly, highly recommend it. And there will be some resources down below in the description. But for today's video, we're primarily going to be going through how to import a campaign from Google, how to install the UET code, which is essentially Bing's tracking code, and then how to set up custom conversions in their interface. So if that's something you're looking for, stick around and everything will be time-stepped down below. So this is what the new Microsoft ads slash Bing ads interface will look like. The older interface is a little bit more blocky and outdated, but you'll start to notice your interface start to update to this sort of setting over the next couple months if it's not already like this. Part of the strategy that I highly recommend is just to gather a ton of data is to start off with Google first. Nine times out of 10, you're going to want to start out with Google and then import your campaigns over to Bing. But as I mentioned originally, sometimes campaigns do perform much better on Bing. So if you have a limited budget, you may want to consider moving most of your budget over to this platform, capping this, and then taking all of your learnings and moving to Google. But I would highly recommend um, for, for most use cases, you're going to want to start off on Google unless your target audience tends to be on Bing. Now, what we tend to notice for the most part is that Bing has a much higher household income and definitely skews a little bit older. And if you think about it, Bing is the default search engine on Internet Explorer or Edge or whatever the name of the browser they're using nowadays. Um, and if people aren't installing Google Chrome and they get the computer just by default, or if they're in a B2B, um, if they're working for their business, they may not install Google Chrome, so what ends up happening is Bing is just the default search engine for a variety um, of, of, of like a major audience out there. So don't sleep on Bing, do not do it. But if you wanna import campaigns to Bing, it's super easy. Obviously on the screen here, you can see import on the top of the screen. So if you go ahead and click that, and then you can import from Google Ads. You do have the option to import from a file like a CSV or something along those lines, but it's a direct API integration with Google. And one thing to note before I move forward is that you're only able to import search and display campaigns. There's obviously no video at this point on Bing that you're able to capture. So keep that in mind that you're only going to be hitting search and display campaigns. So you'll be taken right to the screen initially where you can look at your account and then you can sign into your Google account. So I'm going to continue because I've already authenticated here. And then you can choose what campaigns you want to import or you can import the whole shebang, you can import your entire account if you would like. So if I import specific campaigns, you're going to see that I just have a dummy campaign right now. All I'm running on the Google Ads side right now is, is, is YouTube, so nothing really exciting here, but I'm gonna show you what this kind of looks like if this was for your business. So if you go to your campaign and select it, and you can obviously show pause campaigns if you had that in here too, you can choose to import that, continue, and then it's gonna give you different options because Bing has some minor nuances that are slightly different than Google that you want to make sure that you're following and updating. But um, you can set up tracking templates if you would like. So if you want to um, change your UTM parameters from Google to Bing, or if you want to switch things around, what have you, go this route. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, leave this blank. Um, and then pretty much the defaults here are pretty good for the most part. So. Um, you're able to import things that weren't inside Bing before. You can update your existing campaigns. Um, you can delete the items that have been removed from your Google Ads account. I don't check that one by default. This is a big one though. You're going to want to increase your keyword, ad group, and bids to the minimum for Microsoft Ads. I believe the minimum is like five cents or some weird um, like bid on Bing. Like you can't bid a penny like you can on Google. So there are some minimum bid requirements that you need to hit, so make sure you check that box. And you're gonna to wanna to update those bids, the bid strategies, and then hit those limits that I just mentioned for the minimum um, bid on Bing specifically. So you're also able to update this. And then other options, there's a whole slew of other options in here. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but what you can do is if you're going to add UTM parameters on Bing specifically, you can check this box and then you can, um, you know, append UTM parameters if you wanted. So you could be like UTM campaign equals 
super awesome Bing campaign or something along those lines. So again, if that's foreign, don't worry about checking that off, but you're able to um, append uh, UTM parameters here at this level as well. You can do tracking templates. You can ch make sure your campaign names aren't updated. Um, but the biggest thing too is ads. I personally like to import all of my ads into the account because I'm doing a slew of ad testing. So I highly, highly, highly recommend that you check this ad option box because you might have like hundred of ad, hundreds of ads in your account, which isn't a big deal. It's only gonna enable your, your current live ones that are on Google. But if you're trying to like move around themes and you're trying to like play with things, I personally like to have all the data at my disposal. So again, I highly, highly recommend you check this option here for ad options. And then you can choose to pause campaigns, but again, don't have to worry about that too much. And then if you're dealing with Google Shopping campaigns, you can also import um, Bing Merchant Center, which I'm not gonna go through in this video, which is deserves its own video, honestly. So once you get done from that portion here, you can then continue, and then you can choose the frequency that it imports. So if this is your first time importing a Bing campaign from Google, I would recommend just running it one time, one time. Do not run it where it's going every day, every month, every week. You, at some point, I recommend you get there, but the first time you ever do it, do it once and then comb through the entire change history on Bing to make sure stuff's not messed up because time and time again, I've seen it where you do an import, you think you're good, and you come back a day later, an hour later, and you're like, oh my gosh, something here is not great. So make sure that when you get to this section, you import now once, but highly recommend not to do the daily, weekly, monthly until you get the exact settings that you want. So highly recommend that here. And then when you get to that point, once you do your now or your once, you just click import. And then what'll happen is it's just literally going to queue through and update all of your campaigns that you have. And depending on the size of your account, it might take like 10 to 20 minutes, but for the most part, it happens pretty quickly. So I'm gonna pause the video here for a second and cut um, to what it looks like once it's imported. All right, now here's what happens. Um, it's asking me to submit payment right now, which I am not going to do because I'm not planning on advertising on Bing for myself at this point, but here's what it looks like. Um, and then it also prompts you on how often you would like it to um, automatically update. But again, you can always come back to this, edit it down the line and change it. And then it shows you everything that happened. So it's like, hey, you got one new campaign or it tells you if something got skipped or what sort of errors happened. So you can kind of comb through this and find everything that happened. And then it kind of gives you like ideas on what to hone in on. So if you see that a bunch of ad extensions got skipped, you can be like, oh crap. I gotta log that, I gotta go check that out. Same thing that happens for like negative keyword lists or what have you, so you can make sure you check that out. And then finally, you can go to view imported campaigns here, and then you can see here is test one, here's my campaign. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pause this guy just in case, just to make sure. Um, but then you can go through the actual campaign, go to change history and check everything out, or just go through like your normal search campaign checklist or something along the, those lines to make sure you're good. So, that's how you import campaigns from Google to Bing. Bing makes it pretty easy, it works very well. And then once you get comfortable with this tool, that's when you start to automate it and you move it to daily, weekly, monthly, whatever type of import schedule you feel, you feel comfortable with. I like to do daily for the most part because then if I make changes on Google, it mirrors my strategy on Bing. And I would say most of the time I'm going that route, um, unless if my like competition and bids are dramatically different between the two platforms, which for the most part, <clears throat> it's not it's not a huge deal. Um, so the last thing I'm going to want to touch on today is the Bing UET tag, which is essentially used to track the users that go to your website from Bing, and you can build audiences, you can create custom conversions. It's essentially Bing's tracking pixel that you place on the site, and it's really easy to set up. So in the new interface, if you go to tools up here, you're going to see UET tag. Um, in the old interface, I think it was in the bottom left-hand side and it says conversion tracking or, or something along those lines. What you wanna look for is if you just control F UET tag, you'll find it. So if you go here, you can grab the UET tag and then you just need to create it. Um, you can read through this if you would like, but essentially it's create UET tag, here's the code, put the code on your site. If you don't know how to place the code on your site, I'll place a link somewhere on the screen to my uh, Google Tag Manager video, which will show you how to place those tags. But if you create this tag, I can just call it raise awesome Bing UET tag. And then what happens, here's my code. I can copy it. And here, here's a weird thing for you guys. So this, this copy pasting works fine here in this iframe. 
But if you go to copy, you get like another like separate pop-up that allows you to copy and paste it. I don't know why Bing does it that way. It's just a, a weird thing that I never fully understood. But you can just copy the tag here, copy it. And then you can place it inside Google Tag Manager, WordPress, BigCommerce, whatever, whatever backend system you use to place it there. Or if you don't know what the hell any of this is, send it to your developer because you can just click email here, send it to your developer to place it on the site. So that's how you create it. The next step is creating those conversion goals, which is important, obviously, your conversion actions. So if you go to your conversion goals page here, which again, I clicked on conversion um, goals in the UBT tag session, or if you go to conversion tracking and then click on conversion goals, you're gonna get here. And then this allows you to set up your goals in whatever way you want. So if you're a lead gen based business and you're looking for a confirmation page, you can do a destination based URL. If it's an event based and you're doing it through GTM, you can do that here. This honestly deserves its own video as well. But if you're setting up conversion goals, this is exactly where you want to go. And if you don't know what you're doing here, um, I'll have a link somewhere on the screen or down in the description to some support articles. And I will have a video down the line that kind of describes how to set up these events. If that's something you're looking for, please comment down below and I'll make sure to prioritize that. Um, the last thing you're going to want to do for your big account is confirm that auto tagging is turned on. I believe as of six months ago, that is a default setting within Bing ads where auto tagging will always be enabled. And essentially what that means for everybody just to get you up to speed is if you don't have auto tagging turned on, that means you're not going to be able to see any of this data inside Google Analytics by default, unless if you're throwing on some tracking template and you're tracking it. So the reason why you wanna have auto tagging on or confirm that auto tagging is turned on is it allows you to track all of this data within Google Analytics, which is extremely important. So really, really, really make sure you do not skip this step. And if you go to your um, account section here, you can make sure that that is turned on. So if you go to account summary, I think it's underneath the management section here. And my apologies, they changed it in the new interface. Hopefully I can find it. Aha, here it is. <laughs> it took me a minute to kind of go through that, so I had to make a cut. So if you go to Tools, Preferences, they, they changed the layout here in the new interface. It used to be, it's always hard to find, but you go to Preferences here, and looky there, auto tagging is actually turned off, which I thought it defaulted on for all new accounts that were created. So I'm gonna have to follow up on that one there. But make sure you enable UTM tags here, check this box, and replace all of your existing tags make sure you go that route and then you save it. And it may not let me save it because I don't have my legal business name in here, but again, this is for testing purposes. Really, really, really make sure you go through this step. So then all of this data is being sent through to Google Analytics and you can track that user. Essentially, something called an MS click ID gets appended to all of your URLs and then it's tracked inside Google Analytics so you can see Bing CPC source medium. A lot of information, but support articles will be down in the description. Um, but I mean, that that's that's about it on Bing. Bing, don't sleep on it. It's a really, really good support platform. Um, if you're limited by budget, it could be your all-in bet and you'll be pretty good if you're limited by budget. But if you're looking to support your strategy on Google Ads, make sure you go to Bing. There's a lot of opportunity here. The competition tends to be a little bit lower because not everybody's on it. And we see performance and I see performance on Bing all the time, so. Make sure you check that out. Otherwise, if you guys have any questions, make sure to drop them down below in the comment section. I'll make sure to get to all of them. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. See you guys next time. Bye.